What's going on YouTube? Or Storm here coming at you guys with another discussion video today. Today I'm going to be talking about um, the ban list. Um, obviously we do have um, the new ban list coming around, but I kind of wanted to, you know, talk about some kind of obscure cards in the ban list today. Not all of these cards are banned. I think four out of the five I'm talking about today are banned. But I kind of want to ask the question, does Konami really, like, do they forget cards are even on the list? I think that's a reasonable discussion because... Granted, it's a little bit different. Um, in the OCG, typically, they tend to make more radical changes, as, um, whereas opposed to TCG, where things tend to sit on the list for eons past their prime. And Sectors, I think, are the best example. Um, in Sectors 1 Worlds, what was it, 2011, 2012? You know, don't quote me on that. And, you know, Hornet and, and uh, Dragon Boy are still at 1. Um, but it kind of asks the question, does Konami even forget these cards are on the ban list? Um, and it's meaning like, say you went up to Kevin T. Ward or Julia Hadberg, you know, these are the vice president and president of the TCG of Yu-Gi-Oh! respectively, would they even know what these cards even did? And I honestly don't know. Um, I honestly do think that the people who do work on our ban list, I certainly think that there's a possibility that they would be like, they would, you'd have to remind them what a card even did. That's some of the cards that are on the list. They, some, there are some cards that most of 99, 90% of us who are played this game, you know, probably have never activated. There are cards like Mirage of Nightmare, cards like Machiara the Structor, you know, tons of old cards that have been on the ban list forever, but I'm not going to have any of those on this list because, um, while I do think they're a little obscure because 90% of the people watching this have probably never activated these cards, um, there's definitely some obscure ones on this list, but I do think that Konami forgets certain cards are even on the list. Um, I do think that's, but obviously you guys can let me know what you guys think down in the comment section now. The first card, but not to the cards, you know, the first card I'm going to talk about today is this guy here, Mind Master. So, Mind Master is an interesting card. It's a level 1 psychic monster. I don't know its attack lines, but those effects aren't really that important. It's a level 1 psychic monster, so obviously, you know, obviously there is the 1 for 1. There's the one for one synergy. There is the um, it's a one for one. The main thing is you pay 800 life points, and its special and its effect reads that you can pay 800 life points to tribute a psychic monster you control, and then special summon one psychic monster from your deck. Now, normally 800 life points, you know, ask Quefort players is not a cost at all. Where the problem with this card came in was, was also another psychic port card known as Brain Research Lab. So the combo would basically be you'd have Mind Master, you would it would require multiple summons, but you have Mind Master, you would have um, you basically would thin out every psychic monster out of your deck until you had two cam priestess of gustos in the graveyard and one on the field, and you would start draw looping those two cards. And you would keep summoning the cam from your deck, keep looping the other two cams back, and you repeat the rinse and repeat until you drew Exodia, all five pieces of Exodia out of your deck. Obviously disgusting combo. None of us really want, you know, FTKs to be a thing. Um, and mine, but looking in a modern format, is Mind Master um, with the once per turn errata, would Mind Master really be a problem? Probably not. You know, Mind Master has emergency teleport is um, uh, is a uh, Mind Master. You know, emergency teleport is has been limited for you know quite some time. It is a level one light monster, so now in a modern sense, you can search it with um, cards like Where Artho and Sage with the Eyes of Blue. So if you're playing a deck, I think, but I think Mind Master is one of those old cards that could probably come back for the ones return errata. Well, I don't think they should errata everything. I think certain cards should completely remain untouched. I think Mind Master is a card that most people would, if it came off the list and it had a once per turn errata, I don't, it's, it would just be another cool little tech engine you could run with some other psychic monsters. And at best, it would be a tech in a few little decks. It is, a, there are ways to search it for nowadays in a modern setting, but let's be real, most, Brain Research Lab would probably be a tech, a little tech engine with a couple other psychics. Like, I think the time of, of Mind Master would be past nowadays if it had a once return errata, but it would be a really good engine for a lot of decks, and I don't think anyone would complain. But it's also one of those cards I don't think Konami really benefits off of bringing off the list because there's no real nostalgia behind the card. It's not like something like Crush Card Virus or Imperial Order where it was an old card from, you know, Gen 1, the first generation of Yu-Gi-Oh!, My Master is one of those cards I think 90% of the people watching this probably have never heard of. 
and I do think that Mind Master, there's no real incentive for Konami to errata it and bring it off the list, and it's all based on what the OCG creator wants to do. So it's definitely a card, though, that I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, I don't want everything on the ban list errata, but there's definitely a once per turn clause could bring this bad boy off the list, and it would no longer be a problem. Second card we're going to talk about today, this is actually a card that's limited, it's not banned. It's called Divine Wind of the Mist Valley. Yes, the Mist Valley card is on the ban list, but, um, you know, most of you guys probably watching this, if you've played this game, there's probably only, you may have never actually, you know, had to even deal with a Mist Valley card on your opponent's side of the field. Like, Mist Valley Falcon is a very versatile card in some build decks I've played, and Avian is an amazing card in Pendulum decks in a modern sense. But Mist Valley is a very old card that says when a wind monster returns to your hand, you can special summon one wind monster, level four wind monster from your deck. Um... The problem with this card came in, there were some FDKs involving Dnex Ally Birdman, which is also limited. You could probably include this card next to it as well. There was an FDK called the Mist Valley FDK, which was not a fun format. This, um, certain cards like Symbol of Heritage, where that's currently now limited, is on were involved. It was an Ancient Fairy Dragon, you know. If honestly I could be all completely honest, like if Ancient, Ancient Fairy Dragon's like the catalyst of this whole entire FDK, if that card was banned like miss valley could be a three because that card granted i don't feel like that should happen but i do think that you know nowadays i mean miss valley is limited so you can't exactly play it in a lot of decks i mean it's really good if you think of a deck like harpies it's pretty decent and deck like you send you it's pretty good but you know it's limited and you know we you if you Yu-Gi-Oh players weren't trolls let's face it and didn't want to play these decks you know, self-destruct button would be at three. Let's be real. So if, if it was that the case, self-destruct button would be at three. But it is a card I would like, you know, it is limited. And I'm, we, we can play a copy of it, at least in our decks. But it's a card, and one of those cards that I feel like once per turn around, then bring it off the list. Uh, next card I'm going to talk about is Tribe Infecting Virus. This is a card I've done videos on, in the, a video on in the past. It's a very old card, and if you're unfamiliar with it, does it be, like it says on the screen here, discard one card from your hand, declare one type of monster, and all monsters of that type get nuked. So, first of straight away, it does have a cost to discard cards, but it is not a hard once per turn. And one thing I think Konami does with some of these erratas is they have is they view cards in their old broken context, not viewing cards in their what they would do in their current game. I think that's why cards like Demot cards like Sinister Serpent. If you look at those erratas, if they had their original effects, they wouldn't be a problem. But Konami sees what the, the shenanigans Demot enabled when you could bring it back without with Dimensional Fusion. You could Dimensional Fusion bring Demot back. Demot effect add you know Monster Reborn or any spell card back from your graveyard. There were a lot of loops with the card, but in a modern setting, those would be a lot. You know, a lot of the cards that Demot you know enabled that whole combo are gone. So, and that's the same thing with Tribe. I feel like. Tribe's one of those cards, the reason it's banned is simply because A, Konami forgot about it, or more likely B, they view Tribe as how broken it was back in the day. And the part of the reason I also think it sits on the list is it supports decks like Mermails, and like it or not, Konami doesn't want you playing that Mermail deck. You know, I know, you know, you love that, if you play Mermails, I like Mermails, it's a fun deck. I don't own the deck, I've always wanted to, but konami doesn't really gain anything from you playing that deck that's one of the reasons i think tribe does sit on the ban list it does have a pretty decent stat line you know and but i feel like it could it could probably come off the list with no errata whatsoever but you know just you could konami would probably give it a once per turn just to be on the safe side and it's a low it has a level four body so there's obviously you know those totally awesome you can nuke the board and um attack with it and then um lock down your opponent with, with go Bahamut Shard and totally awesome. But obviously with Lynx coming out, it's not really a viable thing quite quite yet, at least until we get, you know, a better link of maybe like a Starboy retrain or something like that. But um, kind of going off tangent here, but I, I do think Tribe Infecting Virus is kind of an obscure card. Um, most of you guys probably never even seen one, so definitely a card that I feel like is a little obscure. Next card is Fishboard Blaster. It's a very old this is kind of a, one of those cards where it's you could argue you could make the case Fish War Blaster is one of the best tuner monsters of all time. So it has a pretty simple Fish War Blaster has a pretty dang simple effect where it's if it's sitting in your graveyard you can actually bring it back back and then it'll actually by discarding a water type monster to your great graveyard from your hand. It is a it is a level one so obviously you know you know one for one it's one for one target. 
Um, it's if you can, basically if you control level three wa lower water, special summon it from the graveyard. So if you're thinking of it in a modern context, you know obviously you think mermails. If you have um, if you have any of the level three monsters out, if you have a, say a marksman on board, you can just special summon this out of the graveyard. Now the main restriction they put on this card is all the other materials have to be water. So we realize the volume of good uh, water materials, that's not really a restriction, especially considering how much you can loop this card. Um, and you could argue it's one of the best tuner monsters we've ever received, just simply because it can recur itself infinitely from the graveyard over and over. And cards like Brianak, you know, it's not the hardest card to get out of your hand. There's cards like Brianak, you know, in, the, in those days, Brianak could bounce your own cards. Um, could it come back with a once per turn to Rata? Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I don't feel like, you know, it's kind of like the same thing with Tribe, you know. Bring it off the list would help decks like Mermails, and Konami doesn't really want to do that. So, it does set up pretty easy Trish plays, because you just need two level fours on board, and then you can just bring it back. And there's some cool things you can do with Fishboard Blaster, but it's definitely a card that probably deserves its place in the ban list. But, in a modern setting, I feel like it's probably never going to come back in t like, without eight months per turn around. But it is a very good card. Um, definitely. And then the, the final card in here is actually a card you guys probably seen in some of my deck profiles. This is Kaiser Coliseum. So if you're unfamiliar when this card came out, it was actually a very, very old card. Um, it came out in Magician's Force, and the only other set it was like a Dark Revelation. I think it was three. It's Kaiser Coliseum is one of those cards that has the the biggest thing is that the bottom line attack. It's not the. It's not a very confusing card at all in terms of text, but the bottom card attack is what always gets people confused, and Kaiser Coliseum was a card that won me in many games, but it never was really, if it was going to be hit, it was probably going to be hit during, you know, the Bujin format where it was a problem, but as time went on, um, me personally, I realized this, Kaiser Coliseum was outclassed simply because you couldn't rely, it wasn't like the days of hat format where you could summon a lead yoke, summon a Pallades, and activate Kaiser Coliseum, and your opponents can't out it. And then the game just, the game passed Kaiser Coliseum by, and it wasn't really seeing a lot of play when it was eventually hit. It was hit very recently because of, I believe it's the card is named Destiny Hero Dark Angel. This really disgusting loop you can set up where you summon a, you summon a, you just have to have a monster out, like a Bilza. You have to have, you know, it's very easy. You go Kaiser Coliseum and Destiny Hero summons the field. As long as you have a monster out, you can use Kaiser Coliseum to completely lock your opponent out of summoning any monsters. And there's, and because Dark Angel, I believe, also prevents them from activating spells, traps the only answer. Well, a lot of the b FTK builds I've seen run Royal Decree as well. So you could effectively just summon a monster. They have Dark Angel. They can't do anything. And that is why it was placed on the ban list. It's, and partially because I don't think Konami really wanted to give it a brand new effect because it's a very old card. And it had, you know, well over almost a decade to be reprinted and given new text, you know. So. Rather than erratating it, rather than giving it new text, reprinting it, Konami would took the lazy route and ban the card. But I feel like it, the reason it is banned is a little obscure. But and I think most of you guys, if you've only, if you unless you got in the game during hat format, you've probably never even seen Kaiser Coliseum activated on you. It's kind of one of those old cards that I feel like, well, it's well, it's definitely you know, it's while I do feel like it was banned on time because the game had really passed it by, it's definitely kind of in a more obscure card that is placed on our ban list so anyway guys about comes to end of our video today i hope you guys enjoyed um and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below um what cards do you think what cards do you think that are on the ban list for do you think konami actually does forget cards that are on the ban list do you is there a card i probably missed that's kind of obscure that you know that's not you know not counted in like some of the older formats let me know down in the comment section below as always i thank you guys for watching for Orstorm storm signing out